Hello my lovelies, this is Brandy here. I haven't said it before, so I'll say it now. I love to play Japanese role-playing games. And my favorite one is Final Fantasy VII in every form imaginable. The thing is, nobody knows who the first or perfect Sephiroth clone was. My theory is Cloud was the first Sephiroth clone, but is he the perfect Sephiroth clone? The short answer is no. The complicated answer is he could have been. Cloud is just incomplete. Let's go through a history of Cloud, starting with the Nibelheim incident. Cloud, Zack, and Sephiroth all went to Nibelheim to investigate the failing Maka reactor. During this time, Sephiroth became upset after coming to the conclusion that he wasn't like everyone else, essentially a monster in comparison. In the Maka reactor, there was a creature, Genova, he believed to be his mother, and took out his anger at the revelation on the town by burning it down. Cloud saw everything that happened, as did Zack and in a fit of rage and despair, managed to defeat Sephiroth when Zack couldn't at the Maka reactor. He wasn't able to kill Sephiroth, though the argument could be said he actually did kill the first class soldier, and was on the brink of death when the Turks, a CIA type organization, and Hojo, a scientist, came to clean up the mess. Here's where my theory that Cloud actually was the first and only perfect Sephiroth clone begins. Hojo experimented upon Zack and Cloud. I believe that he focused mainly on Cloud, the only one to defeat Sephiroth, because it was highly intriguing. What if Hojo could enhance Cloud's abilities using Genova-infused Sephiroth cells. The scientists already had Sephiroth's DNA since he had overseen Sephiroth's military career. Using this DNA, he began his experiments. Hojo first tried Zack, but Zack had already been infused with Genova cells and Maka because Zack was a first-class soldier. Zack wouldn't have been a good candidate for this reason, and was soon discarded. Cloud, however, had barely any Mako exposure, and hadn't been infused with Genova cells. He had a drive to prove himself, and Hojo wanted to create a new, perfect soldier in Cloud. The only thing the scientists didn't anticipate was Zack freeing both himself and Cloud from their containment cells. By this time, Cloud was already experiencing Mako poisoning, which began to fracture his mind. He'd endured numerous tortures, and only managed to survive because Zack did his best to comfort his friend. Cloud was left practically mindless and unable to move on his own, since his body was trying to heal from all the experimentation much like the other Sephiroth clones. You might be thinking that all the Sephiroth clones had tattoos on their arms and Cloud did not. You're right. My answer to that is we have no idea when Hojo started numbering his experiments. He could have wanted to number Cloud as one, but Zack freed them before the tattoo. Zack had no tattoo either, so he couldn't be the first Sephiroth clone. Hojo decided to count Cloud as a failed experiment, since the two soldiers couldn't be found. In the original Final Fantasy VII and Crisis Core games, Zack was killed. The military had found the first class soldier and had orders to kill him on sight. I'm sure if they had seen Cloud who Zack had hid before the battle, they would have taken Cloud to Hojo. Upon his death, Zack told Cloud to live for them both, wanting Cloud to put everything that
that had happened to them behind him and to just live life. Cloud not only took this to heart, but his fractured mind took on Zack's personality in the hope of honoring his friend and to cope with all the trauma. As Cloud's mind began to piece everything together, Cloud began to assimilate back into society. He was found by his friend Tifa, nursed back to physical health, and started to build the life Zack wanted to live. Five years had passed since the Nibelheim incident, and this section of time gave Hojo and Sephiroth a chance to further their individual personal agendas. Hojo learned to brand his experiments, and Sephiroth, well, he learned that he could control his cells in others. Neither scientist nor soldier knew the plans of the other, but Sephiroth could possess these new experiments. Despite Cloud's fractured mind, Sephiroth was unable to pinpoint the core of Cloud and could not possess him. The other clones had intact minds. This is the only defense Cloud would have had to keep Sephiroth from completely taking over. Now, possession and suggestions are two completely different things. Sephiroth could suggest and influence Cloud's actions, but ultimately, Cloud was still himself. This theory also suggests that when Cloud tried to kill Aerith or Ares, depending on the form of media, or when he gave Sephiroth the Black Materia, it was the only time Sephiroth was able to control Cloud, though the hold on that core self wasn't for very long. Using all this evidence, if Cloud's mind wasn't fractured, Sephiroth would have been able to possess Cloud at any given moment and more clones would have been produced to create an army of controllable Sephiroth clones. They would have been weapons to neutralize the opposing force and infiltrate groups of enemies. What about when Cloud's mind was healed, you might ask? Well, even from when he was a child, Cloud had a very strong will to survive. Sephiroth couldn't overpower that will, no matter how many suggestions he gave. It's also possible that Aerith was boosting Cloud's mental strength to overcome Sephiroth. So, this has been my theory on Cloud Strife being the perfect or first Sephiroth clone. I do have another thought on the end of the original game where Cloud confronts Sephiroth in the final battle. And I don't really believe he was fighting Sephiroth himself. The group did that together. I believe Cloud was defeating the bits of control that Sephiroth had on his mind. That doesn't mean that Sephiroth wouldn't still be able to suggest things to Cloud as shown in Advent Children, but Cloud would have had an easier time to refuse those suggestions. Another YouTuber has suggested that Cloud had both PTSD and depression. I'll link her YouTube video here and in the description below, which makes sense and furthers my thought that Cloud's last battle in the original game was in his own mind, that Sephiroth was a manifestation of those two disorders. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Or do you have other questions I didn't answer? Did I even understand the events right or completely wrong? Let's discuss and see where the remake finally takes us. I'll have another video on my thoughts with that at a later date. Until then, this is Brandy, and I hope you have a great day, week, month, or year. Bye!